Hello children. Welcome to Ames India's online classes. This is biology session. Coordination, the linking system. Children, this is the fifth lesson. Very interesting. You know that the ability to respond to stimuli is a fundamental characteristic of all living organisms. All living organisms have a basic need to control their systems. One of the most important requirements for controlling all the factors of the body is a system of rapid internal communication. The cells and organs of the body do not work independently. Their activities are coordinated, isn't it? Which means that uh, they work together, carrying out their various functions at uh, certain times and at certain rates according to the need of the body. Coordination in mammals means higher vertebrates is achieved through two systems, each with its own particular role. What are they? The nervous system, which deals with the rapid and short lasting responses, whereas the endocrine system that brings about slower, longer lasting responses okay the nervous system consists of cells and tissues in multicellular animals and it conveys the information between sensory cells and organs it controls and coordinates the different systems of the body okay particularly the nervous system performs uh, very very important functions let us briefly recall the major functions of nervous system are to control and coordinate various body activities both voluntary and involuntary and also to regulate the internal environment of the body to react to the environment through the sense organs and the nervous system enables us to remember to think and to reason out, isn't it? These are the main functions. All outside stimuli are perceived by the nervous system by means of by means of sense organs. By means of our sense organs, the sense organs are called the gateways of knowledge. What is that subject which deals with the nervous system? Neurology. Neurology is the study of nervous system and uh, the receptor organs. So, are you ready children? Let us uh, know more about the coordination, the linking system. Okay. We will do different activities every day. So, some of the activities which uh, require coordination, let us discuss. Sharpening of a pencil, sharpening a pencil, grasping, grasping a doorknob, walking or running or driving and a few physical actions. They all involve well-coordinated movements made with well-balanced postures, isn't it? To sharp the pencil, you need to see, keen observation is required. You have to hold that blade or the sharpener properly, okay? When you are walking, when you are running, when you are driving, so many physical activities involve the coordinated movements made with uh, well-balanced 
postures okay in fact whenever we move the three basic functions what are they movement balance and coordination they work together to perform purposeful motions of body parts okay any negligence definitely lead to some accidents we can call it as isn't it okay we may fell down we miss the balance dislocation okay. this is actually quite a feat because moving is a complex process of for the body it is a complex process for the body even standing upright is a difficult challenge of balancing on just two feet with a narrow base okay at uh, it is common for us not only to stand upright easily and apparently effortlessly but also while keeping our balance to perform many other functions isn't it so if you observe if you observe keenly the reason behind so there is a coordination between different organs present in our body okay what other functions do you think needed in coordination and balance for example when you are playing football how much coordination is required the coordination between the hands and legs balancing when you are kicking a ball when you are crossing a road the coordination between the eyes body parts legs okay so many parts are involved isn't it so so what other functions do you think uh, needed in coordination where almost all functions need coordination all our functions are carried out by an effort of several systems working together for example while movement we hardly ever use just the skeletal system or muscular system alone several other systems also have their own roles to play even within the muscular system several muscles work in a sequence or at once what triggers the movement of the muscles what triggers it's a kind of path involving the way that the other organs tissues and cells work okay for example when you are running your muscles require more glucose more energy than the remaining parts of the body your leg muscles require more energy your thigh muscles require more energy so there is a coordination the circulatory system present in the body provides more glucose to the muscles of the limbs that is called coordination okay when you are reading when you are concentrating your brain requires more glucose so the body provides more glucose to the brain okay so like that the coordination so it is a kind of pathway involving the way that other organs tissues and cells work all of them pick up signals of change from their surroundings and respond to them this process triggers different functions in our body as well as by our body for example it is natural to move to a side of the road when we hear or see a car approaching isn't it it's natural because the coordination we are much alert when you are moving on the road when you are crossing the road 
okay what helps us to respond to such signals okay responding to stimuli the coordination is nothing but responding to stimuli what helps us to respond to such signals signals nothing but stimuli why does the living body respond to such signals we can think of a response as an effect of a change in the environment of the organism or signals of change that is nothing but stimuli what is a stimuli anything which brings response in the body is called a stimuli all living organisms respond to stimuli it is the basic characteristic feature of all living organisms whether it is a microorganism or macroorganism whether it is a plant or animal any living organism respond to stimuli the cat may be running because it saw a mouse here the stimuli is mouse response of the cat is it is chasing the mouse plants grow towards the sunshine here the sunshine is the stimuli response the growth of the plant towards the sunshine okay we start sweating when it is hot and humid here the stimuli is a uh, hot environmental condition response is our skin responds to that heat and the sweat is produced the ability to react to particular stimulus in a particular situation must be of great importance in ensuring the survival of the organism okay even which you have studied in your lower classes about uh, the adaptations in living organisms they are also response to the stimuli only if the organism is not responding to the stimuli then it is not considered as a living okay the ability to react to a particular stimulus in a particular situation must be of great importance in ensuring the survival of the organism here the term survival is used not just living surviving in order to survive some changes adjust to the environment is required there is a sequence of events that brings about responses okay so responding to stimuli so they start from uh, detecting changes in environment both external and internal environments the body detects the changes or stimuli what are those changes the changes are nothing but uh, the stimuli transmission of the information processing of the same okay that uh, stimuli is carried and the processing of the information takes place after that okay finally the responses the response will detect and execute the appropriate action it execute the appropriate action in order to understand this let us do an activity a simple activity in the presence of your teacher Okay, you can perform this activity let us do the following activity to find more about response to stimulus holding a falling stick holding a stick take a long scale or stick at least uh, half meter length keep your fingers in holding position as shown in the figure you can uh, hold uh, like this here it is mentioned no like this you can mention like this you can hold okay so uh, could you hold it exactly 
at the point where it was suspended between your fingers yes mark the point where you caught the stick then how far up was this point from the end suspended between your fingers you can note it why did this happens so first you may hold okay you are holding uh, the position okay you can watch it the length the height okay at what height you are holding so after some time uh, there may be a change you can observe mark the point where you caught the stick how far up uh, was this point uh, from the end suspended between your fingers why did this happens how fast do you think uh, the process was means uh, these are all the responses ask your friend to hold the stick scale near the end and let the other end be suspended between your fingers let uh, there be a very small gap around a centimeter between your thumb and the stick or a scale and the stick or scale are and the four fingers there must be a little gap now let your friend uh, allow it to fall okay your friend ask your friend to pull it down try to hold it the responses are brought about by rapid changes in some muscles and such changes are usually related to changing stimuli okay when somebody is pulling it down automatically when you are concentrating when you are holding it you try to grip it okay rapidly rapidity of response indicates an efficient communication system linking those parts that pick up stimuli to those that trigger a response okay so it is a linking system stimulus is the question response is the answer we can say the integrated pathways it involve okay or we can say it is called coordination so here your sense organs you are touching it you are feeling it that is moving down it is going to fall down if you leave it so that's why you are holding it tightly isn't it and you are seeing it with your eyes so some signals reach some stimuli reach your brain and immediately the response are generated okay the rapidity of response indicates an efficient communication system linking those parts that pick up the stimuli to those that trigger a response okay the faster the stimuli reach the faster the response is generated it is the integrating pathways we can call it as nervous coordination what makes this kind of communication possible the greeks believed that all functions of the body were controlled by the brain since the damage to that organ produced remarkable changes in behavior okay so greeks uh, ancient time they believe that all the functions of the body were controlled by the brain so they observed that in uh, the people with a damaged brain they produced remarkable changes in their behavior okay if any injury or wound occur to the brain they had very little idea on how such control could be exercised okay though galen galen was a, a greek philosopher he is a greek uh, physiologist physiologist means the person who study about the functions of the body okay the subject which deals with the functional aspects of organisms is called physiology the person who study physiology 
okay is called a physiologist so he is a greek physiologist especially anatomy okay and uh, the period is after death uh, that uh, ad 1 129 to 200 in between he made uh, one notable observation so one of his patients he was a doctor having uh, suffered a blow on the neck when falling from his uh, chariot complained of uh, loss of uh, feeling in the arm while still retaining the normal muscular control of its uh, movement okay one of his patients so he suffered a blow on the neck so he is Mr. Gall, he is a Greek physiologist. So Gallen concluded that nerves were of two kinds, those of sensation and those of action. What are the two kinds of nerves according to the Gallen? The nerves, those of sensation and those of uh, action. According to him, the blow in the neck had damaged the nerves of sensation, but had not affected its uh, action. So, this was the uh, observation of uh, Gallen. Okay. So, why do you think uh, Gallen drew such a conclusion? Okay, what is his conclusion? He concluded that the nerves were um, two kinds, one of uh, which is sensation and another one is of action. So the patient reported uh, the problem due to the damage of nerves with sensation but not the action. The functioning of the nerves as uh, integrating systems was little known till late 18th century. Okay. So then the physiologists began to study the mechanism of nerve functioning and found how signals were transmitted by making the connection between recent work on electricity and the propositions on working of the nervous system made till then. Okay, the scientists started, the physiologists began to study the mechanism, how the nerves are functioning. Now, we know more about uh, how nerves from different sections of the brain and spinal cord control responses of different areas of the body. Now, the knowledge is complete. We know, we also know the probable pathways that transmit the information, but we still know very little about the working mechanisms of the nerve cells. Okay, in your lower class also you have studied nerve transmission, okay, nerve impulse means the uh, stimuli reach the brain and spinal cord in the form of electrical impulses the same time the response is also generated in the form of electrical impulses and reach the effector organs it may be the hand it may be the leg or it may be eyelid or anything okay but whatever the knowledge is update but we know little about the working mechanism of the nerve cells so in order to understand uh, the function of nerve cell, we need to study the structure of nerve cell. Okay? Observe a permanent slide of nerve cell or neuron under microscope and try to find out its parts. Compare with the diagram given beside. Okay, you can study. Each nerve cell consists of cell body with a prominent nucleus. Okay, you can uh, see here 
the picture it is the nucleus each nerve cell consists of a cell body so this part is called the cell body up to here cell body with a prominent nucleus it is a eukaryotic cell there are fine projections mainly of two types extending from the cell body of the nerve cell there are two types of projections one is uh, the projections with branched ones they are called dendrites they are short and a long projection without branches it is called a axon okay the small projections are dendrites while a long one that extends to different parts of our body the axon it is uh, surrounded by a specialized insulatory sheath called myelin sheath okay this is the long tubular projection without branches it is called axon the axon is surrounded and protected by a sheath that is called myelin sheath this sheath myelin sheath is interrupted at regular intervals called nodes of ranvier okay so here so this myelin sheath is interrupted at regular intervals they are called nodes of ranvier so ranvier nodes next the myelin sheath is made up of uh, special cells they are called schwann cells and chiefly consist of fatty material they are made up of a fatty material so axons not having the sheath are non myelinated fibers or they are also called non myelinated axons the covering also forms a partition between adjacent axons the nerve cell body lies either in our brain or spinal cord or very close to the spinal cord in a region called dorsal or ventral root ganglion dorsal ganglion or ventral root ganglion in the brain or spinal cord it is difficult to make out the difference between dendrites and axons on the basis of their length often the presence of sheath helps us to find out but several axons here do not have sheath okay if if sheath is present on the axon then it is a myelinated neuron or myelinated axon so in order to distinguish between the axon and dendrites it is not easy okay if myelin sheath is there we can identify but if it is not there most of the axons without myelin sheath also present in the brain and uh, spinal cord tissues okay children more about uh, the neuron we are going to discuss in the next class please read the textbook to clarify the doubts with the regular teacher thank you for watching our video please subscribe our channel and press the bell icon for receiving latest updates